The A4 has five questions that can be about tire or wheel service or diagnosis. Now at this point, I haven't taken the test yet. This mini series is basically a review of what I'm expecting to see on the test. And tires are super easy. There's no way you get any of those five questions wrong. So let's begin with a quick review on reading the sidewall information. Is this tire made for passenger vehicles, temporary use, or large trucks? Which one is the load rating? Which one is the speed rating? Moving on to tire wear patterns. What does underinflation wear look like? What does overinflation wear look like? Out of camber, caster, and toe, which one is not a direct tire wear angle? If the angle is out of specification, which one causes the most tire wear? the most tire wear. Here we have a tire that is worn on the outer edge. A veteran technician will tell you that this can be caused by a few things that may be true, but for the test, if you see anything about tire edge wear, think camber. In this example, the tire wear would be from positive camber. Incorrect toe in the front causes feather tire wear and incorrect toe in the rear causes diagonal wear. The diagonal wear is most notable on a front wheel drive vehicle. Cupping can be caused by static unbalance, dynamic unbalance, or a worn shock absorber. At a static unbalance or dynamic unbalance, which one causes wheel tramp and which one causes wheel shimmy? Remember that wheel tramp is a tire bouncing up and down, wheel shimmy is a tire shaking from side to side. Keep in mind that loose wheel bearings can give similar symptoms as a dynamically unbalanced wheel. Moving on to steering pull. Can tires cause a steering pull while driving straight ahead? Yes, in many ways. Ever heard of conicity? What if one tire was bigger than the other in the front? That'll cause a pull. If the inflation pressures were different, that'll cause a pull. If the tires were the same size but different tread patterns, you better believe that would cause a pull. Now we talk corrective actions. For all these problems, you need to determine needed action. Real simple, if the tire shows underinflation wear, check the tire pressure. If need be, inflate it to the specification found on the placard, never the one printed on the tire. If the tire shows feathered wear, you'll check the alignment and proceed from there. Last up is checking tire runout. Here, I'm checking the radial runout of the tire using a roller tip on a dial indicator. The reading here might not be reliable, but some of us are visual learners. This is done for visual purposes. Radio runout is up and down motion of the tire. If the reading exceeds six hundredths of an inch, then the driver could feel vibrations while driving. Here I'm checking lateral tire runout. This is the side to side movement of the tire. Lateral runout. This reading is taken at a smooth place in the sidewall. The reading should also not exceed six hundredths of an inch. And that wraps it up for tires. I'll end the video with a funny saying that I recently heard. A man who runs behind a car will get exhausted. But a man who runs in front of a car will get tired. <laughs> See you in video number three where we will go over steering linkages bump steer and memory steer.